A Stuart Models number 9 horizontal steam engine part 1, the introduction video. This is a good example of a very well made Stuart Models number 9 horizontal steam engine. And the reason it is sat on my workbench is because it is a potential job. Before I can quote prices for jobs, I like to look at the parts in detail. As I said in the introduction, this is a good example of a Stuart number 9. All of the parts, with the exception of one, are really well made. I don't know what that square thing is underneath the cylinder, that's a bit of a worry. I really don't think that was made by the same person who built the engine. There is a brass maker's plate fixed to the base of the engine. And I notice that the name on the maker's plate is not the name of the man who sent me the engine, so one can only assume this was built by someone else. The first thing I'm going to do is give it a bit of a clean, because it's not that dirty, but it's been sat about for a while, so there's quite a lot of dust, and once I start to oil it, if there's dirt there, the oil is going to combine with the dirt and it's going to look really messy. This engine is beautiful from just about every angle. It's been really well built by a master craftsman. I don't quite understand the smaller flywheel that is a different colour red to the main flywheel, but hey-ho, that's the way it is. Most of the main parts of the engine, with the exception of the base, have been painted using LMS Crimson Lake paint. What I'm currently doing is oiling all the parts, and the caps on these oil cups are quite fiddly, very easy to drop on the floor and very easy to lose. I need to make sure that every moving part of this engine gets an application of proper steam engine bearing oil. Not steam oil, not motor oil and not 3-in-1 machine oil. This stuff is Hallett Oil's compounded bearing oil. This is my current preferred lubricating oil. The caps of these oil cups are really difficult to handle. It would have been better had they have been knurled slightly. Not forgetting the second eccentric strap, which powers the water pump ram, I'm now lubricating the links and the ram itself. I'm trying to keep this engine fairly clean, so I'm wiping away the surplus with a cloth. There's another oil cup on the crosshead, and I'm removing the cap from this to pump some oil in here. And after lubricating the crosshead slipper, I'm moving my attention to all the moving parts of the governor. These are very finely made, and I'm not forgetting to lubricate the governor bearings too. I cannot stress how important it is to lubricate model engines before you run them. Never assume that they've been oiled. Time now for a bit of oil on the valve fork linkage, and on the valve guide itself. I hate to repeat myself, but before running a miniature steam engine, you must always lubricate every moving part. And the most important moving part, apart from the crankshaft, is the piston in the cylinder. The top cap of the inlet valve is currently missing. It's a very convenient way to oil the cylinder, but when I'm running the engine, I have to keep my finger over the end of it. I'm about to run the engine, so I'm going to stop speaking. It runs well enough, but the timing is out, it's actually retarded, but it's not a big issue on an engine like this. Late admission means there is nothing to cushion the parts at the end of each stroke. I'm performing these initial tests so I can estimate the cost to build this engine into a steam plant. First of all though, I'm concerned about things on the engine. Nothing really serious, but the steam tap leaks on every junction, including the flange where it's bolted to the engine itself. This is a very simple fault and it wouldn't take long to rectify it. 
But all these little jobs add up to a big job, and that's assuming that everything comes apart okay. I really hate it when I work on an engine and find things like sheared off bolts, but I don't think I would have that problem with this engine. When I turn up the air pressure, you can see just how much this valve is leaking. And then there's a very strange square thing underneath the cylinder. That is the exhaust. That needs fully remanufacturing because it doesn't look right. My hand is still in the shot because I'm holding my finger over the hole in the top of the valve. From here, I'm afraid it goes a bit downhill. These are the other parts that have been supplied to build into the steam plant. A very large, quite ugly boiler and an exhaust condenser with a water preheater coil fitted. I'm going to do a comparison. Have a look at the boiler and the water preheater condenser. Here they are, sat at the other side of the bench. By way of a comparison, have another look at the engine. This is definitely a bit of a case of beauty and the beast. The engine is beautiful. Well, apart from the exhaust pipe. It's top tip time. This is a good one. In this clip, I'm cleaning away all the residue of the metal polish from the condenser. And it's quite simple to do. You need a paintbrush and some WD-40 and a cloth. A better idea is to avoid the residue by using masking tape when you clean the boiler bands. The boiler is ugly and the condenser is ugly. And neither of these items match the engine in any way. I sat and thought about it for a while. This boiler and condenser unit are quite heavy, and so is the engine. Oh yes, and I also forgot to mention, I do not like these twin burners. I once had a Max Steam version of this boiler. And often, when I would light the boiler, only one burner would ignite, followed by a big bang as the second one lit. Once one of these explosions was so great that it blew the ceramic burner out of the flue, it sheared the bolt holding it in place. I've been asked to build these three items into a steam plant, but I've found three major issues, only possibly major issues to me. One of them is the steam plant would be extremely heavy, and the customer is not a young man. The visual quality and physical size of the boiler and condenser do not match the engine in any way. And the third issue, building the steam plant in two halves, a boiler plant and a steam engine plant, would take considerable time. And then, of course, there's this thing underneath the cylinder. This has to go. I phoned the customer and explained what my thoughts were on the subject, regarding the physical size and weight of the plant, and we both agreed that it would be much better to make the plant in two parts. All I'm doing in this first episode is cleaning up the engine. I'm using WD-40, which is really good stuff, and a soft paintbrush to remove the dirt. WD-40 is essential in any workshop, in my opinion. I always have a can of it laid about somewhere. And sometimes I also use WD-40 as a cutting lubricant in the lathe for certain metals. Time for another run. These are actually the sequences from earlier on in the video, but this one's in slow motion. And that concludes the introduction. I will give this job some serious thought. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.